Ladies and gents, hello and welcome. My name, of course, is Zobit Potato, and here we highlight the best strategy games every single day of the week. And today we are checking out Endzone, A World Apart. So this is a strategy city builder type game that pits you against the environment in a post-apocalyptic world. We're going to be jumping into a brand new game here, and uh, we're going to be seeing what this game has to offer. Uh, sure, we can play in normal map settings, that's fine. Random seed, it's actually quite important, uh, given the context of this game, uh, that you start in a randomized world. And uh, settlement name, uh, Terraton uh, Potato Town. There we go. That seems that seems pretty good. And um, so, as ever, I will try and uh, impart some of my wisdom uh, of playing the game uh, upon uh, upon yourselves. Uh, what I do have to say, after playing it for a good number of hours now, is that it's a very very interesting take on the uh, on the post apocalyptic uh, sort of vibe. Um, my specific favorite mechanics, uh, which I do indeed hope to show off over the course of this episode, are probably to do with exploration and scavenging. Uh, and the way that that works uh, will be uh, will be forthcoming. Alright, let us build our home. Okay, so let's immediately chat about what is going on. I'll pause and uh, and we'll and we'll see what's uh, we'll see what's up. So this is our starting location, the bus wreck. This is where we can set a couple of building priorities. We can either build buildings, repair buildings, build roads. Uh, we can also uh, tell our colonists to wear specific things, and we can tell them to use specific tools. This will become clear in uh, in just a little bit. Up at the top, as ever, we've got all of our resources: water, food, wood, scrap, tools, protection. Uh, we've got medication, cloth metal, plastic, electronics, and coal. All of these are kind of like advanced resources. In order to produce them, we have to we have to go through a certain given production process, which we will definitely do uh, probably for all of these over the course of uh, over the course of this video. Uh, we've got our knowledge here, which is our research points, pretty pretty basic. We've got the number of adults in our colony. Adults work. Children collect food. C children transport food and water to the home uh, from a central storage area. And also you can see uh, there's five children in the colony at the moment. And this gives a snapshot of how close the children are in terms of progression to becoming a full-fledged adult. So as you can see, Melanie here is what, like 75-ish percent of the way there to becoming an adult. Uh, we've got con uh, confidence, uh, which is uh, basically happiness. Uh, if we're able to increase our contentedness to a uh, sufficiently high level, then we will get a higher uh, rate of reproduction, which is kind of nice. And uh, we will also get a, a little boost to life expectancy and uh, a whole bunch of other perks that, uh, that come with it. We've got radiation of settlers. Obviously, this is a uh, very radioactive world that we now inhabit, and uh, we need to be careful. And then we've got uh, average health here. And uh, if we have low health, then we're going to get everyone diseased, and diseased, diseased people are bad people. Uh, okay, so... First things first, let's immediately get, let's immediately get all of the basics sort of set up. We've got a couple of wrecks around, we can scavenge, we can scavenge some scrap from the, uh, from the wrecks that are just chilling around here. Uh, but for now, I think we want to, we want to probably get the, 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 the very most basic bits and bobs established. So, uh, we're going to want to get, we're going to want to get water set up in the first instance. So, let's immediately get, uh, let's immediately get a little bit of water. The little green squares are where we are going to end up building roads. So, let's, uh, let's make sure that they all line up. That's kind of nice. So, that's a jetty, a cistern, jetty to collect water, cistern to store it. Uh, then let's have a little look. Let's get a fishing hut over here. We can plonk this down somewhat within the same proximity of the uh, of the jetty, perhaps? Uh, probably not. We're going to maybe move this back a little bit. Uh, one interesting thing to note about fishing huts is that if we put two fishing huts close together, then the second efficiency, uh, the second fishing hut will have a much lower efficiency. So we're incentivized to kind of put it round the other side of the lake, or indeed on a different lake if, uh, if we want to do such a thing. So, uh, very, very important here. We can assign our settlers specific roles within our community. So, because we place down a cistern, because we place down uh, a fishing hut, uh, we can we can assign those roles, and we will assign some of these roles. Uh, we've also got a couple of builders here. Uh, mostly, I would suggest that probably sticking everyone who is not currently occupied in a building role, that way that you're able to build stuff super darned quick. It's kind of self-explanatory. I don't know why I felt the need to, to say that. But anyway, let's get this done. Let's go into three times speed here. Um, let's chat about overlays while whilst uh, this is getting built. This is quite important. So this is the very 
very, very first overlay that we'll, uh, we'll touch on here. This is terrestrial radiation. As you can see, this ain't great. This ain't great at all. So we probably want to get this area decontaminated. And there is a way that we can do that. Uh, but basically, if your settlers consistently walk through radioactive areas, uh, they get sick. They get, they get sick, they need medication, they need a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I'd rather just not deal with that. So uh, we can go into the build menu here and have a little look at our tasks. We can get, you know, bespoke wood collection orders. We can do that through like a, like a flag system. Um, we can gather scrap, gather plants. Uh, but what we're really after is the removal of radiation. So I'm going to set up something like that. And then I'm actually just going to basically create a pathway... A pathway through the radiation, and that should do. That should do for now. It's going to be a little bit. It's going to be a little bit irritating dealing with radiation. It always takes much longer than I anticipate to actually sort out radiation problems. So starting early is definitely uh, a good sign. Now, at the moment, our, our radiation situation is not terrible. As you can see, there's a couple of patches of green. There's a tiny little smidgen of uh, of yellow in there. No red at all. That will change. There are environmental factors that impact the amount of radiation that your colonists are affected to, and we definitely want to stay on the right side of uh, the radiation situation. So, uh, we now have a cistern built. We've got two people that are actively engaged in collecting water. Uh, let's keep an eye on the amount of water that we have up in the top left-hand corner. Let's also keep an eye on the water tank level. This, this cistern can store 2,000 units, uh, and the bus can, I think, store a little bit of units, potentially. There might be a couple of units in the... In the inventory of the bus. Either way, it doesn't particularly matter. The cistern is is our primary storage point for uh, for uh, for water now. And look at this. We've also got the uh, the fishing hut as well, which is grand. As you can see, our food supply should be increasing somewhat, or if it's not increasing, it should be decreasing at a slightly slower rate than it once was before. Uh, let's look at the next overlay here. Soil moisture. This is actually quite important. Uh, it will start to rain, so uh, this soil moisture is not forever. Uh, but it's just worth bearing in mind when we inevitably want to get, uh, to get fields set up. We're going to want to sort that out. Uh, location attractiveness. Uh, this basically is not super important. But, I mean, the the, the upshot is, is that we want to build our houses not next to our industrial estate. That's, that's basically what we need to consider. Okay. Next thing that we want to get set up is undoubtedly a forester's lodge. And actually, a forester's lodge in this vicinity probably wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Yeah, again, let's let's try and put our industrial estate out here. Let's keep our let's keep our uh, I guess our starting area reserved for houses and whatnot, and uh, let's get a scrapyard as well. Scrapyard also very very important because the scrapyard will allow us to collect scrap. Scrap and wood, two basic resources in the game. Uh, having a consistent supply of them, pretty darn important. Okay. So, after that is all set up, we probably want to think about building some housing. So, there's two types of housing that we can immediately build straight off the bat. Cabins, which are great, uh, can live and give birth to offspring. Shelters cannot, shelters cannot uh, house people that are going to generate new people. Uh, that was a very, very long-winded way of saying. Uh, shelters can store way more people. Cabins can only do two adults and three children. Shelters can do 25 inhabitants of any sort. However, you can't have you can't have people having babies in the shelter. So, I mean, immediately, I I think we're gonna we're gonna see if we can try and rock and roll with a good number of cabins. We're gonna go with what this number of cabins. This seems like a pretty decent number of cabins. Eight cabins, all in this area. The location should be, you know, reasonably attractive. We can obviously get a couple of buildings that will uh, that will make the location a little bit more attractive. But uh, but for now, we're we're pretty much okay with this. Uh, foresters, scrap collectors. We do need to get these people. Or we do need to get these roles assigned at some point. Although for now, I'm actually reasonably reasonably okay with the situation. Uh, we need a little bit of extra scrap. Okay, well that is just fine. Because we are building the scrapyard, although the scrapyard will require scrap in order to build. So, in order to make up for the shortfall in scrap, we are going to set up a gather scrap collection point. And we will increase the number of people that we have doing some gathering tasks. 
which it's only one at the moment. It's only one settler. Decrease the number of builders that we have, and let's assign uh, five people to just do basic settler stuff. And that should mean that we're going to be able to see a couple of people jump into action and harvest some of the wrecks around here. This is totally fine. I'm I'm absolutely okay with this. This is this is grand. We have one homeless uh, settler which is probably going to be rectified very, very quickly indeed once we get the scrap needed to complete one of these houses. And uh, that'll give us a little bit of a little bit of spare housing, which is kind of nice. And look at that. What do you know? We've already hit a pretty high level of contentedness. Higher rate of reproduction. Newborn settlers will live slightly longer. Excellent. That is wonderful. Okay, we've got a scrapyard up and running now. We've got a forester, which is up and running. Always probably want to have at least one forester, at least one scrapper. I imagine that's uh, probably a pretty good way to go about doing things. A little bit low on the old food. We'll increase the number of fisher people and also increase the number of water carrier people as well. We've got a few more extra, a few more extra people here. We can demolish this, uh, demolish this pillar because we've collected. Actually, we haven't collected all the scrap around, but that's not necessarily a problem because the scrapyard is uh, is going to be able to collect everything within this radius here, and there is plenty of stuff to be. Uh, to be getting started with so uh, so that's pretty darn wonderful if you ask me not too displeased about that okay next on the list we've got food uh we could get more food more food is is not necessarily a bad idea more food is not necessarily a bad idea however i think there is a, there is probably something that we need to get down as a priority and that is well first of all a recycler recyclers are very very important they separate metal cloth plastic or electronics from scrap uh, with low efficiency, we obviously want to get uh, a refinery. A refinery is a better recycler, uh, basically. But, you know, for now, this is this is ab absolutely fine. Uh, where do we want to stick this? Honestly, over here and over here. And I tell you what, whilst we're, whilst we're zoning two brand new recyclers, we actually probably want to get a third recycler. They are a little bit... They are a little bit expensive in terms of scrap, so that's not exactly ideal. Let's increase the number of, uh, of scrappers that we have so that we can maybe pick up a little bit more sca uh, scrap and apprehension. Apprehension? No. Uh, with in preparation, in preparation to just build all of uh, all of the recyclers that we could possibly need. No, what I was really going to suggest was actually that we get a bit of dirt road set up. How wonderful is that? Brilliant. Let's uh, let's get this let's get this set up around here. Okay, that's not looking too bad. That's not looking too bad. So builders should get on this at some point. It's probably going to take them a little while. So let's put it into three times speed here. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So the scrapyard is working is working pretty darn hard, I can see. That's great. We got loads of peeps here. I'm really looking forward to having some new, uh, some new children. This is almost certainly something that we want to get to expand the size of the colony. We just need more workers, really, at this point. Uh, everything is going very, very nicely. Just more workers. That's what we're That's what we're really after. And look at that. What do you know? Recycler is up and running. We will assign one singular person to work in the recycler. And the recycler has, uh, I, I, is a pivotal building. It really, really is. So what it does is it takes scrap that we collect through the scrapyard, and it turns it into cloth, metal, and plastic. Now, Cloth and metal, I guess, are like the most essential, the most essential advanced resources. Uh, and that's why we wanted to get two recyclers straight away. I can rotate the camera. I don't know why I've not done that. Uh, it's very, very important. Very, very important because it is tools that are made from metal and it is radiation protection that is made from cloth. Radiation protection is this is this constant negative modifier that you have to... You, you really want to have your colonists wearing radiation protection. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. By the way, look at that. Children coming online. That's what we like to see. Um, yeah, so radiation protection and tools. Uh, your colonists need both of them uh, pretty much at all times as well. So we want to have a, a pretty... A pretty good supply of both cloth and metal. It takes a little while to produce it, actually. Um, but that's kind of by the by. Doesn't particularly matter for now. What do we got? An oncoming drought. Stockpile water and food in order to survive. The soil is going to become infertile. Uh, kind of to be expected, to be honest. Droughts happen very, very regularly. Uh, with that in mind, we will actually start construction on a temporary storeroom. Temporary storeroom, pretty important to store a little bit of extra food. We'll get that over there. And we will also build a second cistern. 
right over here as well. We should be fine to use the, uh, the same jetty. We just need to assign a few more people to water collection. Perhaps temporarily just to increase our uh, our short-term supply of, uh, of water. We also want to get a person working in the recycler so that we can produce a little bit of metal a little bit more reliably. Okay, so this is like the base level of stuff that we need to have that we need to have happening. And, oh, this is a this is a good this is a good instructive moment that we're about to have together, folks. Uh, so basically, the scrapyard has expanded all of the scrap within the given area within the big old radius. What you can do when that happens? Boop, boop, boop. We just find a brand new area to plonk down. Obviously, it's not exactly ideal. Uh, the range, the range is, uh, is it actually unlimited? I think it might be unlimited. Yeah, it's, it's unlimited. This is something that we'll talk a little bit about uh, in a second. It is unlimited, but it is going to take a heck of a long time to actually get the colonists to, uh, to move to any given location. So you obviously need to consider that the further away it is from the scrapyard, the longer it's going to take for you to actually move those bits of scrap back to the yard. It's very self-explanatory, isn't it? Anyway, uh, let's prioritize this as the building, please. The temporary storeroom is important, but it is not a priority. We got plenty of woods at the moment. Plenty of wood at the moment. Not a super large amount of scrap, but it's not too bad. A little bit of cloth. That's nice. A little bit of metal as well. We're working on that for sure. And that's what we love to see. That is what we love to see, and hopefully we're going to be able to turn that metal and that scrap, or and that cloth, into uh, into something something useful in just a moment. Uh, speaking of useful, why don't I make myself useful and make a little road out here? Because this is where we're going to expand our industrial estate to. We're still, like, what, a couple of seasons away from the drought that is coming down the line. I should note, by the way, that we do have very, very, very basic weather prediction at the moment. So, we have rain, unknown contamination, build weather station for forecasts. Yeah, this, uh, this might bring with it... Look at this. It's happening. It's happening. Look at this. So, there is contaminated rain that is coming our way. As you can see, it is basically just completely covering the ground in radiation. And if we allow this radiation to stay down then we are going to continue to have problems. So we need to be super duper careful uh, about the way that we tackle this. Uh, we're probably just going to straight up line up some decontamination once the rain has disappeared. Perhaps during the drought season. That would be a, uh, a pretty prudent thing to do. Uh, also, temporary storeroom is now built. That's great. It does look like we're not really... We're not really capitalizing on the fact that we have... Uh, a fishery, and also we should get some more water carriers as well. We just need more people, to be honest. We just really, really, really need more people. Uh, everything else is is pretty much going just fine. Reallocated a few resources here, there, and everywhere. Basically, we want to stockpile a little bit more water. Basically, we want to stockpile a little bit more food. Uh, we, you know, we do have an increasingly large number of mouths to feed, and that is uh, and that is important. Okay, settlers with no protective clothing. Use the tailor to make protective clothing. Well, indeed, video game, that is exactly what I was building this little road here for. Because uh, what we really need is a tailor's shop. There we go. Tailor's shop right over there. And a workshop. And, yep, you guessed it. Tailor's shop is going to be used to make protective clothing with cloth. And the workshop is going to be used to make tools with metal. Or scrap, but uh, we want to use metal because metal tools are slightly better. Okay, let's uh, let's keep it going. We have one builder, one singular builder, and I'm actually completely okay with that. Actually, very, very, very okay with that for now. So the builder's going to have to do a little, bit of, a little bit of work, but that's just fine. I'm really, really hoping that we can reduce the number of children that we have and instead increase the number of adults because that would uh, that would literally hit two birds with one stone that would be very very good if it's all possible so what was the damage from the from the radiation i mean it was it was large actually that's that's a lot of that's a lot of radiation here we we should really aim to keep our living area clean i mean that's that's kind of like the the basic basic level of maintenance that we need to be doing there we go so let's clean this entire area so, this is only going to be done by settlers, but it's fine. Many of our settlers are forced to move across wasteland. This wasteland unprotected. We should boost our production of protective clothing. Yeah, so this is actually a really, really unique mechanic of this game. Every time there's a deficit of certain resources, say it protective clothing, say it tools, the game will often offer you, like, a little objective, a little task to try and, uh, 
to try and get you to increase the the resource that uh, that is currently in a deficit situation. Uh, this time it offered me a tailor shop, and to be honest, that's pretty much perfect timing because we should be able to get there. We go. We should be able to get the tailor shop and uh, immediately hit 50% of the requirements for completing the mission. Now, if we have a little look at the tailor shop, the tailor shop can build three things. Neck scarves, which is the base level of radiation protection. It, it, it's suitable against low level radiation, like we currently have. Activated charcoal mask. Activated carbon mask uh, protects settlers against medium level radiation, which is the, the, the yellow stuff. And then we got proper radiation suits. Now, all of these things require different levels of resources to build. It takes two cloth to build uh, a neck scarf. It takes two cloth and two coal in order to build an activated carbon mask. And it takes four cloth, four coal, and two plastic in order to build a radiation suit, which is uh, it's quite a lot, actually. Quite a lot. However, we do get a reward from completing this mission, so it's probably worth us temporarily trying to build activated carbon masks uh, in order to satisfy the requirements of the said mission. Now, keep in mind that in order to get that, in order to get the activated carbon mask, whatever, uh, we're going to need to get a charcoal kiln. Now, the charcoal kiln basically produces coal from wood. It's, it's very, very simple. Uh, we're not going to need to have this, uh, this establishment working all the time, but we're going to at least need to get it probably built next. It's probably the priority uh, for now. And we want to make sure that we get that up and running as quickly as possible so that we can finish this mission. There is a timed bar. We've got 9.7 seasons to do this, and I don't suspect that we're really going to have too much of a problem. Now, season uh, season eight, which uh, I don't know why they call them seasons. They're they're very much like days, but I guess season is a little bit more epic. Uh, but yeah, so the thing that we need to consider uh, is that the 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 lake just disappears, just disappears for the entire season. So you best believe that I'm hoping that all of the food that we've stockpiled, all of the water that we've stockpiled, is gonna keep us going for just that little while longer. Uh, and to be honest, I think I think it will be. We're already 50% of the way through the season, and uh, I'm in no doubt that we'll have plenty of food and plenty of water. We hardly have any people in this in this colony at the moment, so um, you know, overall, I'm I'm not super concerned. Uh, I think that I think that if there's no if there's no water carrying to be done, then the people will just revert to being settlers, and settlers are great because we need them right now to to clean up all of this radiation that has uh, been brought on by the by the rain. Cool. How are we doing on the charcoal kiln? Uh, making progress. Making progress, but it's taking a little while. That's fine. That is that is fine. That is fine. We also we also just need loads of these children to become adults because we we need we need more people to to fill in some of the professions, which is a bit of a shame. Okay, drought is officially ended. The rain is coming, and we're going to be just fine. Look at that. What is that? Homeless homeless settlers? Yes, that's a good sign. The reason that that's a good sign is because that means, indeed, we are, we've now got a whole bunch of unassigned workforce. You can see it right there. Five whole peeps need to be assigned. And the charcoal kiln has just, uh, has just finished, so that's great. Let's put one in there. Let's put one more person into the forestry role, because I, I noticed that we're just a little bit low on the old, uh, the old wood production here. That should be fine, especially if we get one person in the tailor shop. How many unassigned is that? That's two people that are unassigned. Uh, I think I'm actually okay with leaving two people unassigned at the moment. Getting this radiation cleared up would be a big, big boost. Uh, as it immediately comes back down, perhaps, in the rain. Uh, it doesn't look like there's too much radiation coming along with this rain here. That's okay. That's good. Okay, pretty, pretty happy with that. 14 children, though, is, is quite a lot of children. And, uh, with that in mind, we should probably, we should probably pop down a few more cabins. There we go. There we go. I am doing this for a reason, by the way. It's very, very important to keep a sufficiently wide space for a campfire. So a campfire is a very nice building because it will increase the attractiveness of uh, of an area for settlers to exist in, and that means that their confidence is going to be boost uh, boosted. So let's uh, let's immediately get that. Let's also get ourselves a forum here. I don't know if this is going to fit as comfortably. It's not really going to fit as comfortably, but it is important that we get a forum. Will this increase the attractiveness? This absolutely will increase the attractiveness. So let's get the forum over here. Uh, what is that? Scrap pile? We could maybe collect this scrap pile. Or alternatively, we could just yoink it in here. Yeah, okay. Just yoink that in there. 
the forum is a little bit of a it's a little bit of a difficult thing to build. It's going to take us 20 metal, but we can do it. We can survive. We can survive this. Okay, let's make let's make charcoal. Let's make these activated uh, carbon masks. I say charcoal. It, the game calls it coal, but I mean it is charcoal if we're making it from wood, right? I mean that's the the literal definition of uh, of charcoal. Either way, we should be able to make these activated carbon masks pretty darn soon. It uh, it shouldn't take too long at all. In fact, this entire this entire construction process should be done pretty much imminently, actually. Yeah, I, I don't really think there's anything that we really need to wait for. Uh, we can probably throw a few more people into the forestry role for now, given that there is uh, not much happening if we don't have a consistent supply of wood. We're making the activated carbon masks, which is great. Very, very happy with that. Are we going to complete our mission? We should complete our mission. Bada bim, bada boom, we built two, we completed the mission, and we get six additional radiation protection uh, bits of clothing, which is great. Let's immediately revert to working on neck scarfs instead of anything else, and let's also increase the number of people that we have working in the tailor's shop. So, a couple of things to consider is that every single building has got like a, a, a daytime efficiency level, and then also a nighttime efficiency level. Uh, culture and quality of life. Metal tools produced, radiation suits produced, buildings in the category decorations. Ugh, okay. All right. So this is a confidence mission. If this task is not done successfully, it ensures that discontent arises from all settlers. I don't want that. Anyway, uh, back to the next scarfs just for a second and the efficiency bonuses. Uh, we can increase the efficiency of any given, any given building, or actually not any given building, but most buildings. We can increase the efficiency of certain buildings if we give them electricity. Uh, electricity is something that we will get at some point later. Uh, later in the game, it's not actually altogether too difficult to get up and running, but yeah, we we might want to we might want to consider it. Let's also see if we can try and build some metal tools. We're gonna you know get metal tool production because we're required to get metal tool production, but also because it's a uh, it's a pretty good thing to to get up and running. Uh, we have zero free settlers. We got one builder. We don't have any technicians. Technicians are the people that make tools, so we should probably rectify that, right? Let's reduce the number of foresters and let's get. Uh, a few more technicians. We still need more people, right? We, we really are desperate for more people. That's what's limiting us right now. Also, we have contaminated water here, which is very, very bad. Like, absolutely terrible. Absolutely terrible. Can I upgrade the... Can I upgrade the cistern to a water tower? That will become important in, in just a second. We should try and... We should try and get that. I, I'm noticing that if we want to get the cistern upgraded to a water tower we're gonna have to get another recycler which is gonna build plastic so after we get done with the campfire which has been which has been done look at that location attractiveness it's it's big now that's wonderful uh, then we are going to immediately see if we can pop down bada bim bada boom uh where is it i'm looking for recycler please excellent we're gonna pop this right over here cool all right let's get it built and we should be we should be getting yeah we should be getting some more adults very very soon indeed in fact it looks like we got almost six brand new adults that are uh, they're going to come online in just a second here very very cool very very excited for that uh tools we are yeah we're just bang out of tools aren't we we're bang out of tools this is going to be a, this is going to be a little bit tricky to to accomplish but we're going to try our best we're going to try our best. Let's build this next so that we can try and get it built immediately. Look at that. Five brand new settlers, brand new adults, and uh, two more on the way as well. So we get this really quick. We get this really quick, and then we reduce the number of builders. Because I did increase the number of builders temporarily. Reduce that down. And then let's get this recycler working on plastic. Cool. There we go. So that's looking good. We can only have one single person working in, in uh, a recycler at any given time, which is a little bit frustrating. But you know, it is what it is. It's it's life, I guess. It's uh, it sucks, but it's but it's the case. Anyway, that's going to be working on plastic. Uh, we will have this forum built quickly. The forum is a very very important, a very very important structure actually. Radiation suits. I don't really want to build radiation suits, to be honest with you, video game. I don't really want to build radiation suits. We don't really need it. Our population only really need the basic level of radiation protection at the moment. And I'd rather have some spare uh, neckerchief things uh, instead of the 
the tippity top ones. Ooh, look at this. Look at this, look at this. The forum is built, and the forum is is pretty cool because it can it can give you missions, and missions are, are nice. Uh, our people are living on the streets. We shouldn't let anyone sleep outdoors under these conditions. Provide settlers with a home, six. And rewards, it's just free. It's free real estate, dude. Uh, anyway, this is obviously quite interesting because I like I like doing the missions. I like that it keeps it keeps it fresh. Uh, but what's really interesting is the decrees. So we can actually we can actually do a whole bunch of things uh, to affect the community of our settlers here. Water rationing, we can reduce uh, we can reduce water input. This lowers confidence by three, but decreases water consumption by fifty percent. Search for survivors. Your settlers are paying attention to radio messages from other survivors who are willing to join up with your settlement under certain conditions. Um, cool. The effect of a lasting decree is an ongoing impact on the settlement until its abatement period, the point where its decree is no longer enforces a lap. Uh, you know what? Sure, let's let's do this. Let's do this. I feel like that's a uh, I feel like that's a pretty a pretty darn good thing to do. All set, chief. In the near future, we'll be able to look out for radio messages sent out by other survivors and notify you if we run into anything. Cool. So I'm assuming that that is going to give us a few extra settlers at some point, which is kind of nice. Okay. You know what? Keep up. Keep up the expansion here. There we go. Okay, that's not perfect, but we can uh, we can get rid of this scrap here. Do a task, gather scrap. Yeah, cool. And then we will assign some people to do scrap collection. Actually, it should already be happening. Put it this way, I think we'll be just fine. I think we'll be just fine for this mission. We don't have enough housing. We'll be able to get that sorted. And that's uh, that's just fine. We got a decree on the on the go at the moment. Scrapyard is out of scrap. It's very important that we try and we try and stay on top of we try and stay on top of exactly where our scrapyard is working. Because if we have any scrap downtime, then that will lead to problems. I I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Right. Radiation suits. Are we just about ready to start producing radiation suits? I tell you what, we probably are. We probably are. We just need a little bit of plastic. And we're getting there with this brand new recycler. Hey, Chief, we just picked up a radio messages that are survivors from another end zone who are looking for a new home. Uh, they'll think about joining us if we can meet their high demands for housing, protective clothing, and rations. We could really use the additional uh, workforce, but is it worth the effort at the moment? I will say that yes, it is. What do we need to do in order to satisfy the demands of the settlers? Metal tools produced eight. That's actually okay because we'll be satisfying two missions uh, at the same time by producing metal tools and radiation suits, actually. Water produced will easily hit that. Food produced will also easily hit that. It's probably the time frame that's the most difficult here, but that's okay. Decorations category. Okay, I mean, look, we can we can build a scrap totem. Uh, it didn't really leave much space for decorations, because who needs decorations in, uh, you know, in the in the end zone, in the end zone, in the post-apocalyptic world that we that we now live in? Uh, yeah, there's literally no space here, even though this is a little bit of a, a community area. Uh, stick down a flower bed over there. I mean, sure, fine. At least let's let's get this somewhat done. Uh, let's also switch the tailor shop over to radiation suit. We're going to finish the next scarf production. We do still have a little bit of radiation protection spare. So that's just fine. But uh, but we're going to be switching on over to radiation suit production now, which is pretty important because it means that we need to... Uh, means that we need to finish off these missions, which is... Uh, it's very, very doable. I will say. Very, very imminently doable. We've got five settlers that are free. Uh, why don't we stick people onto tool production? Tool production and also tailor production. Tailors already maxed out. That's fine. Charcoal burner. Don't really need any more charcoal burners, to be honest. Don't really need more of anything. We're actually in a really, really good place for, for just about everything. Apart from tools, which is a bit irritating, I feel that there's a little bit of a tool deficit here. There's one settler without any radioactive protection, but that's fine. There's a couple of people that are homeless and one person without tools, but... Honestly, that's that's fine. That's fine. We can be super happy with this. Uh, we've almost... We have not completed the housing mission, but we have completed the housing mission. The housing mission is done. Excellent. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, so we don't need to worry about that necessarily. How's my radiation level looking? Radiation is very, very good. Okay, let's move on to the really, really exciting stuff, which... Uh, which excites me a lot. It's the Expedition Station. So, we're going to plonk this down. This doesn't give attractiveness, does it? No, it doesn't give attractiveness. That's that's fine. It's not necessary to give attractiveness. I'm not bitter about that or anything. 
Let's plonk that down over there. Now, I noticed that we need a little bit of plastic in order to make this happen. Uh, so, this isn't... This isn't wonderful that we're gonna be, uh... That we're gonna be putting a lot of stress on... We're gonna be putting a lot of stress on this recycler right here. People are pretty happy with their new homes. They'll move in and, uh, look towards a brighter future. Oh, wonderful. We didn't complete the housing mission then. Oh, well. Uh, that's really wonderful. The new clothing and tools are very welcome additions for us. Thanks for watching out for us so well, Chief. My pleasure. My freaking pleasure, amigo. My freaking pleasure. And we can actually take some more missions. Uh, our children don't have any place where they can learn how to survive in this hostile environment. We ought to make sure that they can go to school. Sure, I'll build a school. Fine. Uh, where, are we, uh, where are we with this uh, incoming radio message thing? Water production is working. Metal tool production is working. Radiation suit production is also working as well. It's just going to take a little while. And again, plastic is kind of the linchpin of this entire this entire operation right now. As much as I uh, as much as I dislike it. Also, you'll notice by the way that our population it's not necessarily spiraling rapidly out of control. I would actually make the argument that it is already spiraled rapidly out of control. Uh, we're at that stage where we need to think very carefully about how much stuff we put down and how able we are to sustain anything. Uh, just, you know, to to give it some context, you can build super, super fast uh, and end up regretting it very, very quickly because it is super easy for everyone to die in this game. And I'm not really necessarily sure that I want that. Let's get a recycler up and running here. If there's any rain coming, we could definitely maybe look at some decontamination here. But I'm going to get another recycler and we're going to get... Uh, we're going to get some... We're going to get some more plastic production up and running, I think. Seems like a pretty, pretty prudent thing to do. We'll keep this radiation overlay on for a millisecond because almost certainly going to want to decontaminate a little bit. Yeah. With our, you know, extensively, extensively large workforce. We're almost done with the, with the mission that is going to give us even more people. Oh boy, okay. Well, that's something to consider. That is, that is very much something to consider. We have got a very, very large population right now. It's, it's huge. It is huge. Okay, so double plastic production is, is quite a lot. We need, what, four more bits of plastic to, to make the expedition station, which is very, very cool indeed. And then we need a couple more bits and bobs for the radiation suit. Uh, you know, we should also maybe look at getting some, uh, getting some fields. Also, scrap is officially done. Sure. Oh, that's huge. Interesting location. This is this is exciting. This is exciting for a couple of reasons. Uh, let's get this expedition station done, and then we can start talking about interesting locations. Also, let me let me immediately remove radiation. Oh, we don't have any radiation here. We just have a water water that is lowly contaminated. That's fine. Um, this is why the why I want to get this uh, this upgraded to a water tower, by the way. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but let's get the expedition station done, and then let's have a little look at what it can actually do. So, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the exploration window here. Now, this is our this is our facility right here. There's a whole bunch of interesting locations uh, that are surrounding us, and you actually were able, to, you were able to see one on the map right over there. It looks like what, like an old mall or something? It looks like an old mall. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to increase... Yeah, we're going to increase the workforce that work in the expedition to its absolute maximum. And that's going to give us one scout for each and every person that we assign to it. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to send a whole bunch of scouts to all of the nearby interesting locations. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Cool. All right. Easy peasy. So it's going to take a little while for those scouts to, to actually get to where they need to, to go. But that should be just fine. Alright. Decrees. We're still doing okay for decrees. One school built. Yeah, we can build the school. Does that increase increase attractiveness of, uh, of an area? No, it does not. That means that we don't necessarily need to care about where we place it. Stick that down over there. Assign settlers to the teaching profession. Yes, we will do... We will do that indeed. We're about to finish up this incoming incoming radio mission here, uh, but that's that's not too bad. Okay, I think what we want to do now, by the way, I think what we want to do now is sincerely think about adding any extra cabins, or the benefit of adding any extra cabins in comparison to perhaps adding a couple of shelters. So shelters are very, very large, very, very large, and it's not exactly ideal, because in an ideal world... 
I think we would. Wow, there's a lot of attractiveness over here. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll leave it out this way. Cool. Okay, get this down. That's fine. Okay, we got six brand new peeps. I love it. We ought to make some space available to the Outlanders to help them forget their long and existing journey. As a quick workaround, a shelter would probably be the best solution. Yeah, 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 right. I mean, that's exactly what I was thinking, video game. I'm glad that the video game and me are, are so in sync. It's kind of lovely. Either way, this should provide uh, pretty much all of the, the space that we really need uh, to accommodate all of our uh, all of our people. Okay, there is the school being worked on. That's cool. The scouts... The scouts, the scouts, the scouts. Low food reserves. Ooh, yeah, that's a bit of a problem, actually. We need to immediately fix that. Do we have a spare workforce? We totally do. Let's let's think about what we want to do with regards to uh, food real quick. So we could get a hunting lodge, a pasture, a gatherer's cabin. Let's actually get a gatherer's cabin real quick. Yeah, get a gatherer's cabin. And let's also get a... And if I get a fishing hut over here, hmm, I don't think that's going to be workable, unfortunately. No, there's just no combination of ground. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just a bit, it's just a bit of a pain in the backside to get up and, uh, to get up and running. So instead, what we're going to do is we're actually going to build a big old field here. There we go. Build a big old field. And we'll actually also get an orchard over here as well. Cool. So let's get all of that zoned. We've got plenty, we got plenty of people. It's just actually putting them to work. Uh, that's what matters. Anyway, uh, ruins have been scouted. Wonderful. We've actually done a whole bunch of scouting. Let's wait until all of the scouts have uh, done their thing. And then we will move on to discussing my favorite elements in this entire game. And that is the exploration elements. All right, one teacher... Boop. Oh, look at that! We've actually got our, we've actually got ourselves a knowledge point, which is very, very cool indeed. We'll talk a little bit about using knowledge points in just a second, but uh, sorting the food out is the immediate priority, I think. Uh, let's also get this upgraded to a water tower, not because it particularly matters, but because it will matter in the future, and uh, I just want to do that whilst I, uh, whilst I remember. Okay. Let's talk about exploration. Open expedition windows. So, uh, what we have dotted around the map oh, is a furniture store. And that's that's where we are. That's where the furniture store is. Why don't we explore the furniture store in the first instance? I think that that seems pretty darn good. So, uh, we got all of these little icons here. Uh, this will this will matter, uh, but let's, let's not necessarily worry about them too much at the moment. So, what we do is we go into configure expedition. Now, each and every expedition has a certain number of uh, recommended uh, additions. So, if you take a... Uh if you take a metal tool with you, then you're probably going to be able to get more utility out of it, which is kind of nice. Advantage due to having an education. So if you take educated explorers, you're also going to have an advantage. Scrap tools, uh, builder's badge. Builder's badges are kind of a little bit weird in the fact that they're they're acquired. You acquire badges if you go on missions. It, it doesn't particularly matter. Anyway, uh, so let's let's see if we can try and get some people... Get some people sent on these missions. Also, look at how cursed these radiation suits actually look. Uh, I'm going to choose settlers, pretty much, to go on these missions. I mean, we could send, like, a forester as well. It's not super, it's not super essential. Uh, I'm going to try and, I'm going to try and give people 40 freaking food, which is, which is fine. Uh, now, we don't have the food uh, at the moment to, to send the expedition off, but that's okay. I'm also going to say... We could send the cloth away. We could send the cloth away. We'll do that. So this expedition will not head out until until we have all of the required components. So uh, it's gonna take it's gonna take a little while before we get that. Uh, in order to make these uh, these cans of food, by the way, I think it, it requires water and requires water and food, and it's made at the expedition station, if I'm not mistaken. Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's how it's how it's made expedition rations yeah pretty sure it's made just uh just uh just in the building itself okay that's cool can we get this built please we need a lot of cloth we need rather a lot of cloth that is somewhat surprising how many people do we have free Got a lot of people free it's almost a drought day 
So, I mean, if we could get this, if we could get this field somewhat planted uh, and, and ready to rock and roll, then that would be great. If not, it's not the end of the world. Uh, we can pick up a brand new mission. I will do that. One of our refiners some, found some interesting metal barrels. Okay. Should we open them? Yes. Yes, we should. Metal produced, 12. Okay, I mean, that'll, that'll happen just naturally. Man, I am very, very low on food here. Very, very low on food. Is there anything that we can do to increase our food at all? Uh, in the short term, that is, I wonder. Not really. Not really, not really, not really, not really. We're... We're eating fish, and that's and that's great. Oh yes, there is something that we can do. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna choose a seed for our for our cultivated field. So we have two we have two fruits that are available at the moment. We've got lupine and we've got cabbages. Growing time is 1.9 seasons, so that's pretty sad because we are just about to we're just about to head into a drought, which is uh, which is fine. Let's uh, increase the number of farmers that we have to uh, to the maximum. Uh, the fact that we're going to go into a drought is highly problematic, actually. Although, in saying that, if we produce if we produce twelve metal, then we will get a whole bunch of peaches and a whole bunch of beans. So, you know what we're going to do? We're actually going to switch all of our recyclers over to making metal in the short term, which is hopefully going to help us out. Does mean that the expedition that I just sent uh, people on is going to be somewhat of a problem. However, is it maybe worth canceling the expedition and instead sending them elsewhere? Something that we do need to consider as well is that there's a combine harvester expedition over here, which I have no idea where it actually is, where the combine harvester is. Is that it right right there? Either way, uh, some expeditions literally just give you the resources that you can find on them. Others, well, well, we'll get to that in a little bit, but others are a little bit more complicated. We've we've set out to a complicated mission. Look at this, a cake store. A cake store. A cake store. It's pretty close. Let's cancel this expedition. Yeah, yeah, cancel the expedition. Instead, let's go on an expedition to a freaking cake store, or even a general store, to be honest. What's the difference in travel time? Cakes, cake shop is 0 0.8 seasons. It's a round trip. 0 0.8 seasons. Okay, that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. So what we really want to do is we really just straight up want to pick anyone who is anyone. Just send them away. Uh, we don't have that many people to choose from. I really don't want to choose anyone that is involved in water collection or food collection. Sure. Yeah, so this ruin is basically nothing special. We sent out the expedition. Uh, we don't need to send food out or anything. That's that's all just fine. It, it'll just it'll just do it. Man, we have very very low food numbers here. This is this is freaky. This is very very freaky. I uh, I don't like this. At least we're getting to work on the on the cabbage field. We should start to see some cabbages go down. Uh, by the way, there's a whole number of seeds that we can find. We haven't actually got seeds for anything with the exception of lupine and cabbages at this moment in time. So we obviously want to get that sorted at some point. Uh, can I issue a decree with regards to food consumption by any chance? Food rationing. Yeah. Okay, I'm really sorry, but uh, we can't take this for long. There's not enough malnourishment for everyone. There's not enough. <laughs> there's not enough nourishment for everyone. Then it's your responsibility to change that. To ration our food is not exactly doing wonders for our tempers. I mean, sh sure, fair comment. I I'll grant you that. Um, I'm not exactly over the moon that you're that you're really upset about it, uh, to be honest. But I mean, it is it is what it is. I'm I'm doing my best. You know, I'm trying here. I'm freaking trying. All right, we've opened the barrels and guess what we found? Lots of edible food, just what we need. It was a really good idea to take a closer look at those barrels. Okay, maybe that makes my, my edict introduction a little bit premature. We're still going to struggle to get through this drought season, though. We are still going to struggle to get through this drought season. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's also revert back to plastic, plastic, metal, and cloth. Cool. Because we do need cloth to go on that expedition to the furniture store, if I'm not mistaken. Also, hard liquor produced. Now, where the bleeding heck do we produce hard liquor? This is a, this is one that I'm not actually sure about. Liquor or joints that can be consumed. Produces beer, liquor, or joints. Okay, cool. It's actually in the pub itself. I did think that that was maybe where it would be. Uh, does this increase attractiveness? It does not increase attractiveness. That's fine. I suppose you don't really want a pub to be next to you anyway, do you? 
wood scrap and clear building area that should be done very very swiftly indeed so let's uh so let's do that what is this target reached aha so we have reached the end of an expedition it's very simple what we do is we just take uh, whatever resources we want from the location, we stick them into the expedition inventory, and then the the explorers bring it back. So we're probably going to be able to fit literally everything in here, because this is a reasonably small number of uh, resources. We'll have a safe trip home. Just like that. Just like that. And we can actually mark this area for salvage now if we want to. Uh, but it's probably a little bit too far to be of much utility, at least uh, at this moment in time. Okay, let's, uh, let's build the pub. Let's get the pub built really, really quickly. Please... I think we might actually be fine for the drought, but the reason that we're fine, by the way, is because of our 50% rations as opposed to anything else. Uh, let's also go back down to neck scarves here, because we shouldn't be we shouldn't be using as many resources as we currently are to make radiation suits. Radiation suits are all good and well, but we don't need them. We just literally need just literally need neck scarves here. It's uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty self-explanatory. Okay, build the pub. And then maybe we could actually think about getting some dirt roads up and running. We've got a unfortunate lack of dirt roads at the moment. Also, our shelter is completed. Wonderful. Didn't actually notice that that had been completed. But that's looking good. All settlers, uh, old and infertile. Wow, so we can actually separate it out so that we can still continue to increase our population. Um, There's no reason not to have old and infertile in here, I guess. Unless, of course, we specifically wanted to population control, but also we do need to kind of keep everyone in this place at the moment because there's just uh, there's just not enough uh, there's just not enough space. Also, we are basically bang out of water. That is not exactly ideal, but that's okay. Let's make some hard liquor. What do we require for hard liquor? I think it's various ingredients, so like berries and stuff. Basically, whatever we choose to plant in our orchard. I imagine that we're going to be able to make peach uh, peach liquor. So, let's do that. There we go. Increase the number of farmers that we have. Cool, that's on eight. Everyone is maximally employed. We've got one settler that's free. That's just fine. Let's increase the number of water carriers that we have so that we can hopefully start to uh, address the imbalance of, uh, of water. Yeah, it's not not good. Lots of thirsty settlers. I, I get it. I, I really sincerely do. Uh, okay, other good news. Our water tower is now built. Now, this water tower I built for a very, very specific reason. And that is the fact that you can actually filter the water and it will clear radiation from the water. So, whereas this place is contaminated, uh, the cistern is contaminated. Uh, let's actually turn this off. So, let's not get any water sources. There we go. Uh, let's let's assign pretty much everyone to the water tower because at least if this water source gets contaminated We can filter it out whereas we cannot do that with the cistern, which is just fine. Okay, but that should uh, that should be fine Are We got loads of farmers. Yep. Yeah, we got loads of farmers. We got loads of people that are planting peach trees Everyone is doing everything that we need to do at the moment, which is great. Can we take any missions at the moment? Your settlers confidence is low Okay Let's do it. Oh, we've just been contacted by several explorers from another settlement. They're on their way back from an expedition, and they're running out of rations. They'd be willing to trade some of the things that they've discovered for provisions. Uh, wait. Okay, I mean, there you go. That was really lucky. If they hadn't run into us, there was a good chance they wouldn't have made it back home. Wow, we got three radiation suits, seven electronics, and seven hemp. That's actually pretty, that's actually pretty legit. It's actually pretty freaking legit, to be honest. Let's switch this over to uh, cloth production as well. I think cloth production is a better priority. Yeah, water reserves are a little bit low. Yeah, yeah, we can fix that. Uh, buildings in the category water. At the moment, we got one, two, three buildings that are in the water category. We are tasked with getting a fourth. A rainwater collector or indeed a well. Why don't we get a well? A well seems pretty good because that will keep us going even during the, uh, the drought seasons. And we need to get one more water carrier, which I can do if we reduce the number of builders that we have. Cool. All right. Are we are we making hard liquor here? We are making hard liquor. Excellent. There we go. That's 20 that we've made. Got a little while left to go on the mission, so I think that we should be just fine. I don't know what we're making it from, actually. I have no idea what we're making it from. 
probably like beans or maybe the peaches that we brought back from the cake shop actually that's fine okay so let's get that water building done and that's going to give us more water we still have i mean an absolutely horrendous an absolutely horrendous food situation here planting is 77 percent of the way done which is nice it's very very nice it's a big field here that we've got admittedly a uh, gatherer cabin gatherer cabin is gonna be moved let's move that around a little bit cistern we can actually queue this up for destruction to be honest i don't really know why i didn't queue it up for destruction a little bit earlier but that's that's fine so this is what i was sort of talking about my population has ballooned tremendously uh, like really genuinely hugely uh, also cancel this no cancel this demolishing Let's build the well, then we'll demolish the cistern. That's why I didn't demolish it earlier, because we need four buildings in the water category. All right, Chief, you did it. Our water carriers doubled their efforts, and we're able to collect even more water than usual. Excellent. That's exactly what we like to see. Let's keep on plonking people into water stuff. Our people are getting hungry. I think we should focus on gathering more food. What do you think, Chief? I think that's a, a marvelous idea, actually. I think that is a marvelous, marvelous, marvelous idea. Buildings in the food category. We need to get more buildings in the food category. Why don't we look at getting a hunting lodge? That seems like a good idea, doesn't it? That not fit in there? Ah, it's a shame. Cool. Hunting lodge right over yonder. Cool. Let's get that built. And that should give us uh, a little bit of an uptick in food, which is kind of nice. Do we have any free workers at the moment? Not exactly loads. Queue this up for demolition. We will start operating the well. And we will throw more people into the water collection business. Uh, we could also get some rainwater collection if we want to, but uh, it doesn't particularly matter. Not at this moment in time. There we go. 350 food. Kraken. Uh, now, let's lower our production limits of hard liquor here. Because I really don't want to turn all of my food into liquor. It, it just absolutely does not seem worth it. So... Let's be very, very careful about that. We're also completely out of tasks. So let's uh, let's take another mission. Dead bodies on our streets. Uh, build a cemetery and get a mortician. All right, that's, that's pretty easy. And so just like that, you know, we've pretty much been able to get all of the essential basic buildings here. And uh, we've been rewarded by a whole bunch of missions along the, along the way. Let's assign some hunters. Let's reduce the number of foresters we have let's increase the number of morticians that we have yeah so we're still in a little bit of a pickle but with pickles hey you can never be too careful uh we've got we've got some cabbage here that's nice the orchard that we have with the the peach with the peach trees will take a little while to to get online the reason being is that it takes it takes a while for the tree to grow and then it takes a while for the peaches to grow on the tree. So is that everything? That's everything with the exception of a pasture. Now, a pasture is pretty cool, actually, because it will allow us will allow us to start breeding our own animals. So we've got a gatherer's cabin. That's not what I was looking for. We have a hunting lodge. Now, the hunting lodge, I'm going to set this to capture exclusively. Nope not to do that and then we want to select the area of effect we want to select the area of effect to include some buffalo cows and then we're basically just going to task our, our hunters with going and capturing these uh these buffalo cows and then we're going to be able to stick them in our pasture which is kind of exciting isn't it uh, i'm realizing that we do have a few too few builders at this moment in time we've got a lot of building that needs to be done and it's not being done nearly fast enough uh, right so my population is is holding roughly steady we still have a massive food issue. I mean, that's singularly the largest problem that we have. I really should investigate sending uh, some people out of the expedition facility and maybe into the big wide world outside. But we'll worry about that in a little second. Let's just get more builders for now. Let's get more builders. Go, 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 go. Cabbages are looking good. Peaches should be looking even better in just a second. Temporary storeroom is the temporary storeroom. Maybe is is what's uh, is what's kind of limiting us actually. Okay, so we're gonna start clearing up some dead bodies, which is which is good. 
An unexpected opportunity. Yeah, we could worry about that. And in fact, I tell you what, given that we are coming up to the end of the episode here, we should see if we can try and plonk down a research facility. Research facility is very, very important because it's going to allow us to advance our tech. And tech is, uh, tech is pretty important, as uh, you can probably guess in this game. All right, let's get this let's get this pasture built. I'm pretty certain that by the time the pasture is built, we will have captured enough beefalo cows to make this work. Uh, what do we need? Reduce the number of builders, increase the number of workers in the pasture. So then we go choose animal type, and what is this? Buffalo or a wild boar? I I thought that we were gonna use beefalo, but we need two animals of this type are needed on the pasture so that they're able to reproduce. Yeah, um, I kind of thought that we would have to. What are, what are these? Buffalo cows? Buffalo cows? Okay, we're going to we're gonna definitely get a second buffalo cow at some point, right? So, let's choose this type of animal. There we go. So, we should be able to get milk, which is very, very nice. And we should be able to breed them. And we're going to be able to slaughter them as well. Uh, we're going to be able to slaughter them if we, if, we get, uh, if we get five here. So, that's kind of nice. That's kind of nice. I, uh, I'm pretty happy with that. It's going to take us, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, a long time to build this research station, actually. Pretty unexcited about the length of time that it's probably going to take, but uh, but that's okay. There are a couple of problems that we have. Uh, housing amongst, amongst them. Let's queue up a second shelter here. Yeah, I really do not need any more people. Like sincerely, I'm I'm very okay with the with the people that we have. Settlers are in poor poor health. Um, I'm not exactly over the over the moon about the fact that they're in poor health, probably because only only a couple of them have radiation protection, probably because only a couple of them have uh tools to work with, probably partly due to the reason that only some of them have a home. So, there you go. Tough luck, I guess, to the people that don't have a house. Sucks to be you, I guess. Come on. Let's let's freaking go. Capture, capture, capture. Are we going to get a buffalo cow? We got a buffalo cow. Look at that. He's coming back home right now. Honestly, you can just stick it straight in the pasture, amigo. Stick it straight in the pasture. You literally took it into the house. Wow, that's interesting. Okay, so after we get done with that... Probably worth us just hunting down the rest of the buffalo cows, I would imagine. Look at that. We're producing. We're producing uh, another animal. Very, very exciting. So we're basically self-sustaining now, which is quite exciting. Professionals are complaining about a lack of tools. Yeah, I mean, look, we're, we're, we're trying to make tools. We're trying to make tools, but unfortunately, uh, it's taken a little while because all of our tool, tools are currently going into the research station production, which is a bit of a bummer, but that's okay. Let's do this. Uh, yep, cloth is okay for now. Basically, metal metal production is the priority for us, I believe. Metal production should be a priority. We're not exactly in a great place with regards to metal production or with regards to protective clothing production, but this is what happens when you have just a massively expansive colony, sort of all coming online at the same time. It's it's pretty it's pretty terrifying. It's pretty terrifying. Look at this. Look at this fertile land. Oh, it's wonderful. Oh, it's wonderful. How's our radiation looking? Literally no radiation at all to speak of. Well, that's cracking. We got four buffalo. We're getting plenty of milk now. That's very, very nice. We got a pub. I think we've actually built pretty much every single building that we could really, uh, we could really build. What we should do... What we should do, however, is we should go on an expedition. I really, really, really want to, you know, very briefly show off why this game is so freaking cool. Let's go to the furniture store. Let's just assign literally anyone. I'm not super bothered about it. Let's say metal tools. And let's give you as much food as we possibly can. Sure, only three people. It's not perfect. We're not going to take cloth because it's going to take just... It's just going to take too long to, to get the to get the, the colonists equipped to go. But that should be fine. Let's also see if we can try and get a... Oh, look at that. 60 metal tools? Oh, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That's going to be enough metal tools to build the to build the research station. And also, probably to provide enough tools to everyone else here. Wow. 
That was good. I was literally a way to plonk down another workshop, but then I realized, why would we do that if we're just getting 16 metal tools for absolutely free? Okay, so our expedition should be heading off, if I'm not mistaken. As you can see down in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got a little progress bar there. Um, and that is going to finish when we arrive at the expedition location. Okay, also, research station is up and running. Let's assign five researchers over here. Let's open the research window. First time that we're looking at the tech tree in the in the game. I know, it's a little bit strange. Anyway, there's a couple of, like, tier one techs. The way that technologies work is that in order to advance the next tech level, you have to go on expeditions, and you have to find what's called a research utensil. Uh, getting one singular research utensil will allow you to unlock this middle tier of stuff. Getting three research utensils will be the next stuff. Five, etc. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, uh, what we would really want to do, what we would really want to do in a real game, I think, is, is try and get three knowledge so that we can get a refinery. A refinery is a much more efficient way of recycling materials, so it gives us metal, cloth, plastic, or electronics. Uh, from scrap, and it is better. It is way, 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 way better. Uh, although I, I think, to be honest, uh, for now we're we're just gonna do we're just gonna do some random research. We'll do the warehouse research. Uh, basically, the way that it works is that we will just get research points. Uh, we've generated a knowledge. And we're gonna stick that uh, we're gonna stick that knowledge point back into researching, and uh, and then we're gonna we're gonna get our research, which is kind of nice. I will say the resource deficiency for this point in the game is quite low. I was kind of expecting that things would be uh, a little bit more crazy. Uh, also, this is not exactly ideal. Let me fix the decontamination issue. There we go. That's fine. Also, that recycler doesn't have anyone working in it. Yeah, it, it, it kind of sucks. It's okay. Uh, we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Okay, target is reached. We're there. Really looks quite promising. So this is what I love about this game and, and the way that it works uh, the way that it works expeditions. So look at this. We actually get to make specific choices about where our expedition goes. And this is is it's like a, a lovely branching tree. So we can decide to enter the furniture store through the front entrance. Uh, research utensils can be found here, by the way. So this is exciting. Uh, we can enter through the roof, or we can enter through the collapsed side. Let's try and enter from the front. The entrance is barricaded. Shortly after the catastrophe, they probably closed off access to everything first because they hoped they'd be able to open the store again. Not everyone seems to have taken the warnings and new bulletins. Uh, news bulletins, seriously, back then. It's a good thing our ancestors got themselves to a safe place right away. Okay, so we have a 100% chance of opening the door with the axe, which we will do. And that will cost us one of our action points. Now, action points are defined as the number of, uh, the number of uh, rations that you take with you. Uh, so I took loads, and therefore we've got loads and loads of action points. Cool. All right. Now we can have a little look here. What have we got here? Although there should be some functioning components that we can remove, good thing our teacher taught us something about electronics. And because we have an advantage due to education... Uh, the confidence or the percentage chance that we will complete this action successfully is at 100%. So we will guarantee ourselves some electronics, which is very, very cool. And also, look at that. It's a research utensil as well. So whilst we're in the office, why don't we check out the uh, store shelves here? Oh, and look at that. It's a nice little It's a nice little collection of resources. We got, what, a metal tool, a scrap tool, some scrap, some metal, some cloth, some plastic. And uh, we've got a confidence boost for some of our settlers now. Cool. All right. So that's it. That's it over over here. Oh, actually, nope. We've got the upper floor over here. Ah, ouch. I made it halfway up, but then lost my footing on the ledge. Uh, bruises. Oh, no. Some explorers of this expedition lost 25% of their health. Okay. I don't love that. That's a, that's a bit of a shame, uh, but that's okay. Okay. So we completed all of the, the action trees by, uh, by going through the front door. So let's head back out and let's go in through the collapse side. There's nothing left to salvage here. Let's continue. It was successfully completed, even though there was only a 66% chance of making that happen. That's fine. There's nothing there. All right. That's that's okay. We can still go in from the roof. So this would have helped if we if we had cloth, but I think we're going to chance it. There's a 50-50% chance. Or no, sorry. That's a 50% progress. So that shows exactly how much we've actually already explored. Although I would not expect us to... Yeah, I would not expect us to have a 100% chance of accessing... Uh, accessing through the roof exactly because we didn't bring cloth, you know, so, uh, so that's a bit of a shame We're all on the upper floor now again another low percentage chance. Could we not fail these please? Stores already been thoroughly cleaned out. Okay, so that's not led to any secret areas. I, I will say that I have played I have played uh, is there anything else that we can do here furniture showroom excellent I, I will say that I played a fair amount of this game 
And uh, there's always a couple of secret options. So it's always worth making sure that you try and 100% any given building. Uh, we're going to loot and return because there's nothing else to there's nothing else to worry about. This is a tremendous amount of resources that we've discovered here. We don't we don't need to get all of the uh, all of the resources on any specific trip. We can we can come back here as many times as we uh, as we want to. Um, but this is a lot of this is a lot of good stuff here. We got a little overview of exactly what uh, what our what our settlement has. This is nice. This is really really nice. This is really really nice. And to be honest. I, I dig it. I really sincerely dig it. This is really, really nice. It's a very, very nice system of, uh, of operating. And look at this. What do you know? We've discovered the research utensil, which means that we've discovered the level one techs. And, uh, and that is probably a, a pretty decent overview, I would think, of the game. Now, there's a whole bunch of buildings that we haven't explored. There's a whole bunch of advanced buildings, uh, kitchens, uh, refineries, upgraded workshops, uh, upgraded houses, uh, upgraded schools, upgraded roads markets, uh, trading posts, uh, weather stations, electricity. We've not really got to electricity yet. Uh, defense as well. There is a, a, a interesting defense uh, element to this game where you, uh, you know, you run the risk of being raided by, by enemies. That's a risk that you, you exist to take in, in this post-apocalyptic world. Anyway, uh, the long and the short of this is, is that uh, that's, that's enough for now. Uh, this is, uh, this has been end zone. A world apart and um honestly it's it's really really good i really have rather enjoyed my time with this game um i really like the exploration system i really like the expedition system i like the exploration system i like the system i like the building systems i like the little uh, the little settlement that we've got going on here uh, anyway folks if you have indeed enjoyed this video then please do indeed let me know in the comments down below thanks as ever to the fantastic support over on the patreon page people like that help make videos like this possible so thank you ever so much for uh for all of the support over there thanks to banana c senpai and aurelio for being the three 25 plus tier patrons thank you very much for watching folks and i'll see you next time Bye bye